Sleep plays an important role in your physical health. Sleep deficiency is linked to an increased risk of heart disease, kidney disease, high blood pressure, diabetes and stroke. Hi, good evening everyone. We are here on behalf of MGM Healthcare to discuss about a very interesting topic about sleep medicine and sleep disorders. We have Dr. Jairaman Yes, Senior Consultant, Pulmonary Medicine and our Dr. Sanjeev Mohanty, Senior Consultant and HOD, ENT Head and Neck Surgery to have a very interactive Facebook session today. Namaste, Dr. Yes Jairaman. I am a Consultant Pulmonologist working in MGM Healthcare. Namaste, I am Dr. Sanjeev Mohanty, Institute of ENT Head and Neck Surgery, MGM Healthcare. What is sleep medicine? Dr. Jairaman, can you please explain us? Yeah. Sleep medicine is a specialty of uh, medicine, one of the subspecialty of uh, medicine. Under this, you know, the uh, sleep medicine mainly focused on the uh, diagnosing and treating the uh, patients suffering from sleep disorders, mainly the obstructive sleep apnea. As a respiratory perspective, we are dealing with the sleep disorder breathing, diagnosis and management. This is a subspecialty of the medicine. I can add to it, it is a multidisciplinary uh, subspecialty wherein various disciplines of medicine with regards to say neurology, neurophysiology, respiratory as you rightly said, very important uh, cog in the wheel and we have ENT head and neck surgery. Along with it, we have a lot of diagnostics, you know, the radiologist plays a very vital role and all of them come together in a multidisciplinary approach for a sleep team or caregiver. So I hope that answers your question. We hear a lot of terms like insomnia and sleep deprivation. Is both are same? Uh, doctor, can you please explain us about this? Very nice uh, question. Insomnia is insufficient sleep. And that can happen with varied conditions, not necessarily organic. So it could be some deficiency in mental health also, and some amount of metabolic disorders, some amount of physiological inability, all of these can happen with insomnia. But when it comes to sleep deprivation, that is voluntarily a patient is working so much that he is not able to get that, that typical, we said one third of our life, we end up sleeping. If we don't get that six to eight hours of rest for the body to you know, recalibrate and re-jerk the next day into the complete working mode, that is sleep deprivation and these lead to a lot of lifestyle diseases. I think Dr. Jairaman, you can yes, add to Yes, Dr. this sir, well said about the uh, sleep deprivation and insomnia. Insomnia, lack of sleep or inability to get, to get a proper sleep in proper timings. There are a lot of uh, causes for insomnia, primary causes, secondary causes. Secondary causes are many, any bodily symptoms, any stress related, there are a lot of causes. Primary, we don't exact etiology. But the sleep deprivation means uh, the beans are um, insufficient, that is, uh, we are not uh, no, giving the uh, time for sleeping because of traveling and mainly the travel purposes, work purposes. So, we will uh, no, postpone the sleep or reduce the sleep timing. So, we have to wake up in the early morning 4 o'clock to catch a flight. So, we are reducing the sleep timing from you know, uh, 8 hours to 6 hours. This is sleep deprivation. So, in that sleep deprivation, so patient can be able to sleep. But insomnia people, they are not able to sleep properly, lack of sleep or unable to get a sleep. So sleep deprivation means the time, the, the, because of the less time to spend for the sleep by the person. Insomnia means lack of sleep, inadequate sleep. So patient, uh, person is going to bed, is not able to get the proper sleep, it will take uh, you know, two, three hours later only get a sleep or a patient wake up at early morning, so after that there is no sleep. This is insomnia and this is a sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation because of the traveling and work related issues. But the insomnia is the uh, primary and secondary insomnia, the lot of uh, you know, multi causes, so it address properly. I will just add to it, uh, in between there is something called fragmented sleep. That means you sleep and you are not able to continue the quantum of sleep that you require. That could be due to causes which needs medical attention. We need to know whether it is a part of a real ongoing problem inside your body 
or there is something else which also needs a course correction with regards to a slightly different kind of methodology which we all know all of us go through little bit of crisis in life as we call mental health so that needs to be taken into account also with regards to all of this uh, inability to continue a good quality of sleep how can a general public be aware of what is sleep disorders and is there are any common sleep disorders doctor can you please explain us on this yeah the we as a respiratory doctor and ent specialist doctors we come across a lot of patients uh, with the sleep disordered breathing sleep disordered breathing is one of the important common uh, sleep disorder the common symptomatology of the sleep disordered breathing is the snoring during sleep so snoring you all know well this is an abnormal mainly inspiratory sound while sleeping because of the upper airway obstruction upper airway means behind the nose behind the tongue behind the palate there is a softer smooth muscle narrowing which leads to uh, snoring that also majority of the patients we see habitual snorers daily snoring this is one of the important symptom of obstructive sleep apnea apart from the snoring patient pet partner usually say spouse husband means wife wife and husband so they say usually doctor my husband is having a heavy sound while sleeping and suddenly he is you know waking up from the bed doctor so there is a choking sensation and a gasping sensation usually this you know um, this is the bed partner we have to ask the bed partner how is the sleep pattern they usually tell like this snoring gasping or choking during sleep and day time they feel you no know, uh, again uh, tired feeling sleepy and the daytime excessive sleepiness and female population they have a tendency to have developing a headache this is the common symptomatology of the sleep disordered breathing i will add to whatever spectrum that you have already elucidated it is also to factor in the daytime somnolence like because they are not able to have nocturnal sleep if they sleep in the morning and make up those 8 hours or 6 hours that necessarily does not mean he is okay a human being has to sleep in the night until unless they are on a night duty continuously for years together so the sleep cycle changes now we are trying to look at sleep disorders was the question now why should you have a sleep disorder either there is some obstructive pathology in the unified airway as you rightly said or there is something ongoing in the metabolic system in the whole body which is not able to match up with your day to day physiology and that also includes associated comorbid conditions which one should not let go of the radar screen and you know what those lifestyle diseases are you know from diabetes to hypertension to you know some kind of uh, mental ill health to you know kidney disorders and everything so all of these copd very rightly all of these will have a particular intent with regards to a sleeping pattern just one more point we come across patients who would say that in a particular position this patient or the bed partner is snoring less or is gasping less as he said or there is a sense of cessation of breathing at some point for a few seconds that means he needs a complete medical Uh, overall check up to know why only positional changes is happening that means there is some pathology which we need to find out people are scared about surgery and when we hear about a term called sleep surgery it little makes people to get panic can you please explain us about what is sleep surgery and can surgery aid in sleep medicine it's a it's a very nice question and i'll take a few minutes here now there are sleep surgery is not a gun shot therapy for sleep disorders first thing it has to be titrated according to the need of the patient's individual requirement we need to first ascertain which part of the airway is actually blocking the respiratory passage is it behind the nose or as you said behind the palate behind the tongue or below sometimes there is a static problem that means 
like the deep excessively deviated septum there's an allergic uh, component to it there are polyps all of these contribute adenoids huge tonsils all these contribute but even without that there is sometimes the collapsibility of the airway also requires an attention to find out which level of obstruction in the airway and if it's single level or multiple levels we need to find out where is the problem and based on those requirements different surgical requirements or needs are also chartered and nowadays we have some very nice innovative surgeries but only associated with again a lifestyle changes only surgery will never work so i tell them a rule of 3 one third the surgeon's requirement one third the surgery per se and one third the patient profile the patient has to undergo a lot of counseling to make sure the body mass index is within normal limits they should be having a lifestyle changes proper eating habits good little activity along with it a different surgical requirements for that particular ailment and then we need to have a proper follow up these are the things that we know and without assessing where is the problem with a good formatted sleep study which he is going to talk about and along with the radiological evidence one should not aimlessly go for a surgery without any proper investigation so in my practice i would say probably 10% of them of the total sleep profiled uh, patients require surgery and they are very good properly selected patients they do wonderfully well we have a very good partnership and i think in the last 2 years we have done close to 100 and out of that maybe out of seen some close to 3 400 patients but only maybe 20% have operated and they are doing well i think you very will add to dr. it dr mohan sir well said about the uh, role of uh, no the sleep surgery in uh, uh, sleep disorders so sleep disorder breathing occurs in children also the commonest uh, cause of uh, no pediatric children uh, suffering from the no obstructive sleep apnea is the enlargement hypertrophy of the tonsils and adenoids so we are seeing frequently patients with the uh, you know children's school going children's with the loud snoring daily and uh, open mouth breathing dryness of mouth and they tend they feel very tired sleep in the classroom so a lot of patients we are seeing directly after seeing this patient uh, put the torch light in the oral, oral cavity we'll see the enlargement of tonsils with the culprit behind that immediately we send the patient to the uh, professor sanjeev mohandi sir for the adenoid tonsil cleanse surgery in pediatric obstructive sleep apnea this is a common sleep disorder in the children this is the sleep surgery that is adenoid tonsillectomy by the ent surgeon is the one of the goals in a treatment in children adult patients suffering from obstructive sleep apnea 25 to 30% of the patients they require surgical uh, uh, requirement to cure completely so we see any patients as a curative intent so sleep surgery plays a major role in curing completely so we as a sleep medicine specialist we give a long term treatment correction of hypothyroidism obesity correction and also we have a bariatric surgery is there bariatric surgery also one part of the uh, the sleep surgery and we have a mandibulo maxillary advancement osteotomy surgeries are there so these are the kind of uh, sleep uh, surgery for treating the patient suffering from sleep disorder breathing mainly the obstructive sleep apnea so there are a lot of interesting facts and informations that was provided by our doctors professor mohanty can you please explain us or you know tell us about some interesting story about sleep surgery you can see the smile on my face because there are many stories but one which comes to mind very uh, succinctly now in the present context is uh, a story of a young pilot who got his training in arizona came back to india went into uh, this indigo pilot uh, training program and he was a mama's boy he just used to be with his mom and one day desperately he was little obese but uh, he came with his mom and said uh, the mom said i just can't sleep in the house with my son around so we were, i was wondering why 
is that not only does he bray like a donkey, I cannot sleep myself. My, I'm going to, you know, have a disease of sleep disorder. So please do something for him because his senior commandant in the Indigo Airlines have told him, you take care, take three months off, finish off everything and then come because I don't want my air hostess to sleep in flight if he starts doing the rounds of a, you know, anchoring a plane here and there. He was a co-pilot, by the way. So, and then we just established the diagnosis. He had a very severe retropalatal, we call it, just behind the nose, a very bad collapse. And one fine night, midnight, the mom came with the son to the emergency and just found out that he was not breathing, like suddenly. So she got a little panicked and came. Then we realized he needs a little uh, definitive treatment. So with the present cutting edge technology, we did with uh, a laser. Uh, we call it evolopalotopharyngoplasty. There was little discomfiture for the few days post-operatively. He managed. Believe me, he comes next time to my clinic with his wife and the mother together. So I understood what was the reason for his delayed you know, change of matrimony or his uh, marital status. Believe me, it was a, a story worth telling because all of us think about sleep in, in ways more than one with regards to only the medical part of it. But there's so much repercussions around it. And following visits, I keep seeing a lot of aerosols coming, some relatives coming. So I understood that this was the main reason why which has sucked him dry, both professionally and personally. A special enduring story I thought I should tell this. What is sleep study and how is it evaluated? Dr. Jayaraman, can you please explain us, sir? Yeah. Recently, we come across one uh, seven-year-old boy came to me with a history of a recurrent cough and cold. So, I examined the chest. Mother is telling, doctor, uh, my son is not at all, uh, no. Always coughing during night time is a worsening of cough and uh, open mouth breathing. So we are struggling several years, more than five six years since birth. Also, is a recurrent uh, cough and cold nose block and all is telling. We examined the patient. There is some mild uh, wheezing kind of sound. We uh, did a, a radiological examinations. Found that there is some small bronchitis and some mild pneumonia like lesions. So we treated with antibiotics and other thing. And mother is telling he is not able to get a proper sleep because of this uh, lot of sound while sleeping. So we were not able to share the bedroom at all. Just two weeks back we came to me. Lung point of view we did the antibiotic other medication he settled. But because of the abnormal sound, mother showed the video clipping of uh, son how the son is uh, sleeping during uh, no sleep time. Lot of choking, apneic spells during the sleep time. So, we obviously know that any children in this age group, apneic spells, choking, sound, open mouth breathing means so we know this is a, we are dealing with the upper airway obstruction mainly due to enlargement of the tonsils and adenoids. So, after seeing the video clip, immediately I send the patient to Dr. Professor Sanjeev Mohandi sir. So, he examined and uh, he posted that the boy is posted for adenotonsillectomy. After the surgery, he showed the specimen of a large huge adenoids blocking the upper airway during sleep. There is a culprit behind the loud snoring, open mouth breathing and other this obstruction causing all the respiratory issues, recurrent uh, cough and cold. So after the surgery, this boy is doing well, wonderfully is doing uh, no sound while sleeping now. So, I thank uh, Professor Mohindi sir for this uh, wonderful uh, procedures for this. Uh, now, after that, this uh, mother you know, uh, came for a checkup. That time, he, you know, he went and he touched me, my leg. Doctor, you did a wonderful job. My son is doing a uh, you know, night sleep without any snoring, any sound. My son is having uh, no cough at all. He is doing very well. So, he thanked me several times. So, I thank Professor Sanjeev Mohindi for the children suffering from OSA. So, gold standard treatment is the adenotonsillectomy. What is sleep study and how is it evaluated? Dr. Jayaraman, can you please explain us, sir? Yeah. Sleep study is a very important diagnostic test to find out the sleep disorders, mainly the sleep disorder breathing. So, we evaluate the patient. Any patients with a sleep history of any snoring, habitual snoring, or any choking or gasping during sleep, or any daytime tiredness, sleepiness, morning headache, or insomnia, lack of sleep, because of this obstructive airway disease, upper airway problem, obstructive sleep apnea, clinically we diagnose 
we give some questionnaire called uh, the F4 sleepiness scale and uh, the stop bank questionnaire whether you have a snoring, whether you have a tiredness after waking up and whether you have any choking sensation, we will ask the bed partner also. So, clinically we come to the conclusion that seeing the patient we can diagnose majority in adult patient whether the patient has sleep apnea or not. But confirmation, the gold standard test to confirm whether the patient is suffering from what kind of sleep disorder, what uh, kind of uh, severity whether it is mild, moderate, severe. For that uh, we have one uh, the gold standard test to confirm sleep disorder is the sleep study or sleep test. So, medical term is the polysomnography. So, in the polysomnography we record the sleeping pattern. This is an overnight study, single night study. So, we have uh, several kind of studies are available level 1 and level 2 sleep study. We do it in the hospital setting. Nowadays we are doing a level 3 study or home sleep study or portable study. So, we can uh, do it at home or in the hotel room or in the bedside in the hospital we can do the level 3 sleep study. In the sleep study we attach the small pager like gadgets in the chest. It will record the uh, breathing, snoring, oxygen and the airflow everything. And we keep one small pulse oximeter probe in the hand. This probe is attached in the chest recorder and we have one di disposable nasal cannula in the nostril part. This will assess the airflow and snoring. So, this is a simple level 3 sleep study. This is a respiratory channel sleep study. We can diagnose the sleep disorder. This recording during normal sleep will record. Technicians will go home and attach and give the instructions and will go home. So, patient can sleep normally. You can take and uh, turn any side in the bed. In between, uh, patient can go to the restroom and come back. So, normal activity. During routine uh, sleeping, we will do the sleep recording. Sleeping pattern we will record breathing pattern, snoring pattern, oxygen pattern and the respiratory movement pattern everything it will record silent manner. So, next day morning once patient wake up from the bed we download in the computer and see all the patterns. From the pattern we know that whether patient having a sleep disorder breathing, what kind of sleep apnea, is it obstructive sleep apnea or central or mixed and we know that the severity whether mild, moderate, severe. So, based on this sleep study this is a confirmatory test, gold standard test. After the confirmation of the sleep study, treatment is a multimodality. Already Professor Mohandas has said, depends upon the patient clinical condition, stage, duration. We do the medical treatment and uh, surgical treatment and other modality of the treatment. So, sleep study polysomnography is one of the gold standard test to confirm the sleep disorder breathing. I will just add to it. This is the gold standard for sure. Uh, there is, there are two other aspects which we need to know. This is the general overall to distinguish a central versus a peripheral or a, uh, or some obstructive pathology in the sleep disordered uh, breathing pattern. But in addition to this, where if at all we have a doubt, a diagnostic endoscopy is an extremely important tool along with the polysomnography. And needless to say, dynamic MRI, we all are static during sleep. What happens in the airway? It is not a fixed tube. It's a collapsible tube. So, which area collapses? We get an idea in the dynamic MRI. So, all three together brings about the best results to diagnose sleep disorders. I fully agree with Sir's statement that uh, investigation point of view, sleep endoscopy is a very very important thing to assess the upper airway problem. Any anatomical narrowing apart from the dynamic narrowing. So, before the, the gold standard treatment is uh, CPAP, continuous posture airway pressure. Before giving the CPAP, we want to check up the upper airway by referring the uh, patient to the ENT specialist Dr. Sanjeev sir to look in uh, upper airway. There is a nasopharyngoscopy uh, sir will do and in that we find out that whether patient is uh, tolerate the CPAP or may require any kind of mild surgical procedure or any co-ablation procedure to cure the problem. So, investigation point of view sleep endoscopy is a very important uh, uh, investigation and the dynamic MRI also very very important thing. I fully agree with our statement. Why is sleep clinic launched at MGM? Doctors can you please help us what is sleep clinic and why MGM? Okay, why sleep clinic? There are hundreds of clinics. It's like the old story of everybody, nobody, somebody, anybody. Ultimately, everyone knows about sleep disorders. Each individual, I can tell you, who's watching, who's around here, and every one of us. At some point in life, we have had sleep deprivation. But where to go to? If they go to a general physician, they would map out all the comorbidities and see whether this is the reason for your sleep. 
you go to your parents they'll say because you're stressed out you go to ENT surgeon they will say there is a blockage in the airway somewhere go to the pulmonologist they will say there is something wrong in the tracheobronchial tree or the lungs you go to the neurologist they will say something wrong upstairs if you go to psychiatrist something wrong beyond upstairs so like that it is different different varieties so to bring all the clinicians with a central theme of treating sleep deprivation and sleep disorders or sleep disordered breathing disorders are all put in one roof and that is called sleep clinic there is no captain or there's no vice captain here it's a multidisciplinary team where definitely a pulmonologist plays a very vital role and of course we play a some ancillary role as well in the airway those interested clinically in the airway physiology and altered physiology which gives rise to some pathology along with the associated disorders of lifestyle diseases like diabetes hypothyroidism hypertension and of course sometimes neuropsychiatric illnesses they are the ones who will come and take refuge in this clinic for getting the betterment and a panacea for all else related to sleep in a nutshell i said that doctors can you please help us what is sleep clinic and why mgm yeah mgm healthcare sleep clinic the purpose of sleep clinic is a you know well sleep clinic to you know diagnose and treat the sleep disorders mainly as a ent and pulmonologist point of view sleep disorder breathing one of the important disease apart from this there are a lot of uh, diseases neurologist perspective psychiatric perspective insomnia narcolepsy restless leg syndrome aneurysis and uh, somnolency and somnambulism the lot of disorders are there so sleep clinic to diagnose and treat various uh, disorders so commonly sleep apnea and insomnia and other things and all so we have a multi modality treatment this is a multidisciplinary team we have so ent surgeon plays a major role pulmonologist we do diagnostic workup and cpap titration cpap therapy and bariatric surgeon plays do they reduce the weight of the patient nearly it will reduce the sleep apnea severity and maxillofacial surgeon and psychiatrist will give the treatment for insomnia whether primary or secondary and the we have a team of uh, sleep specialist and we have dedicated sleep technicians and sleep lab so in the sleep clinic this is all the main uh, component to treat the patient suffering from the sleep disorders mainly the sleep apnea insomnia narcolepsy and other disorders so this is the purpose to cater for the populations of the sleep disorder because every day every day the sleep disorder problem is increasing the uh, you know insomnia epidemic and sleep epidemic the lot of sleep disorders in general the sleep disorders are the under recognized under diagnosed and under treated conditions so we have to have a lot of awareness for this that's why the sleep clinic we can pick up lot of diseases if you don't uh, give a treatment properly take a treatment properly for sleep apnea it may leads to uncontrolled hypertension uncontrolled diabetes uncontrolled asthma heart attack stroke and one of the worst complication during sleep is the arrhythmias and sudden death is one of the major worst risk factor so to prevent all sort of morbidity and mortality so we have dedicated uh, sleep clinic for the population suffering from the uh, sleep disorders i'll just add one last line to it uh, it is a holistic approach for prevention and treatment of both pediatric and adult obstructive airway diseases and which might lead to maybe the first sign or the symptom of clinical features of something major inside could be a sleep deprivation or insomnia which might be taken up as okay he is tired but the tiredness giving rise to a deprived sleep can be diagnosed with the state of heart radiology department out here as well as the cutting edge technology that we have in this under one roof thank you professor mohanty and dr jayaraman for making it really interesting thank you so much and uh, what i would just say sleep well to wake up well thank you so very uh, this is a important message so sleep well take care of your, take your health uh, proper manner we don't sleep properly the lot of uh, issues so we are here to you know, give the proper uh, solution for this thank you thank you so much